Good evening and welcome to the St. Helena Planning Commission for May 3rd, 2016. I'd like to ask our Public Works Director to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Commissioner Coberstein? Here. Commissioner Sweeney? Present. Commissioner Monette? Here. Vice Chair Kistner? Here. Chairperson Parker? Present. Moving on to our public forum, this is an opportunity for the public to address the commission on items of interest to the public that are not listed on tonight's agenda. Because of restrictions imposed by the Brown Act, the commission may not engage in discussion nor take action on matters not on the agenda. Please observe the time limit of three minutes. Who would like to speak at public forum? Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Vicki Bradshaw and I'm a resident of St. Helena. I'm going to give you the summary version of my comments. My full comments are about 10 minutes, so I have them in written form for you or and for anybody else who wants it. The issue I would like to address is related to the draft general plan section on land use, specifically as it relates to the development project commonly referred to as the Hunter Subdivision Project. I recognize this is a controversial subject, which is part of the reason my husband, David, and I have spent so much time doing research to find exactly what has happened. We recognize, of course, that the current Planning Commission and the current City Council were not involved in the events that started before 2008. After all this research, it became apparent to us there is one issue that has not been discussed in public or in any comprehensive manner, either at the Planning Commission or at the City Council. That issue is that issue is a complete analysis of the potential economic liabilities to the city associated with building homes behind the levee, as well as the fact that these liabilities could be eliminated or substantially reduced simply by rezoning the 16.9 acre parcel to the agricultural land that it currently is. Because the original land deal was done entirely in closed session without any input from either the Planning Commission are the public, many important public policy questions, potential economic liability issues for the city, and legal questions were not fully aired. All important decisions regarding this project have been held behind closed doors as well and out of the public sight. We believe there is far more economic liability to the city if this proposal is built than if it isn't, but the public has never had the opportunity to have these discussions. So let me summar summarize some of these liabilities. The first potential economic liability to the city involves the assertion that public monies may have been spent to benefit a private developer by increasing the value of that developer's property rather than to benefit the general public. The argument could be that the protection of existing property and homes may have been compromised to allow growth for new construction behind the levy. The second, and potentially the most significant economic liability to the city, is if the levy was designed with the idea of allowing growth on the land side of the levy, then the city may very well be in violation of Measure A, which accounts for about $18 million to date. The third potential economic liability to the city involves the levy project itself. If it can be shown that public monies were spent for the purpose of increasing the value of that private development, there is a distinct possibility this subdivision proposal could be determined to be a public works project. And the fourth potential economic liability to the city deals with the life and safety property issues and the city's financial responsibility in the event of a levy breach or failure. Because no levy is flood proof, the ultimate question for every member of the Planning Commission and the City Council is do you feel so confident that this levy will never fail or breach so that you would be willing to gamble the entire financial future of the City of St. Helena on it just so we can have a housing development on this particular parcel of land? In conclusion, this parcel needs to be rezoned as agricultural land in the general pan plan. And it needs to be done now before the general plan is finalized. The economic downsides of this project may put the city in financial jeopardy for decades to come, which is not what any of us wants. This decision can no longer be held only, this discussion can no longer be held in 
uh, only closed door session with the result that the public has no ability whatsoever to express an opinion or even to know what's going on. That is exactly what got us into the mess in the first place. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Here, are, if anybody wants them, I'll hand them to you. And Would anyone else like to speak at public forum? Seeing none, I will close the public forum and move on to item number four. It's an update on a potential at the 1000 Mills Lane Hotel application. Do we have a staff report? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, staff did not prepare a staff report. Um, Chair Parker requested an update on the status of the application for a uh, potential hotel uh, at 1000 Mills Lane. And in response, I asked the property owner, Mr. Ted Hall, to come and present um, an update, and he has accommodated that request. So there's no report, there's Perfect. been no application submitted. Uh, staff doesn't have any conceptual plans at this point. However, Mr. Hall can uh, provide you the update and, and provide any additional um, brief responses to questions. Perfect, thank you. And thank you for coming, Mr. Hall. You're welcome. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Uh, it's great to be here to talk about this project. Uh, I'm here with my wife, Laddie, our son, Chris, and our uh, director of special projects, uh, Elliot Faxstein. Uh, just a brief history. We're talking about the 10 and a half acre parcel uh, previously owned by Carl Dumaney on, uh, on Mills Lane. Uh, in August of last year, we uh, conducted a workshop with the city council about uh, a proposed expansion of Farmstead. Uh, and it's important to us that we uh, think of this project as an expansion or extension of Farmstead, which I'll get to a bit more in, in a moment. And we had that uh, discussion, which we understood um, clearly to be non-binding on the part of the city council, but received enough uh, encouragement and uh, public interest and support in our project that we proceeded with the purchase of the uh, Dumaney property, which closed on the 7th of September. Uh, since that time, we've been um, uh, working on uh, exactly how we cho choose to uh, proceed with the project. Uh, to remind you, uh, this is basically an extension of the campus of Farmstead. Uh, we are, uh, will complete a not yet fully uh, specified uh, minor lot line adjustment with Dr. Gold's property uh, that is currently adjacent to the existing farmstead parcel, which will make the uh, former Dumaney parcel contiguous with, uh, with farmstead. And we envision uh, architecture, buildings, uh, landscape uh, that are completely consistent with the existing campus of farmstead. Uh, the idea being that you would not uh, uh, encounter uh, any uh, difference in the ambiance at any point of the uh, of the combined properties. We're uh, proposing to add up to 80 rooms of lodging uh, to the existing farmstead activities. All of the food and beverage activity, all the existing staff associated with that, uh, our customer services organization and so on would be part of the existing farmstead uh, team. So in terms of uh, uh, aggregate impact of uh, additional uh, employees and the like, uh, this is actually a very uh, substantially uh, reduced level of impact because it is an extension of uh, an existing uh, food and beverage operation. We envision that the access to this portion of the property for uh, lodging guests would occur through La Fata, which is the street that connects Mills and Dowdell uh, for the next several years until the ultimate relocation of uh, Mills Lane and uh, Highway 29 occurs to square up the intersection, which is right here off of the uh, end of the of the school property, where the uh, Performing Arts Center is currently being uh, constructed. <coughs> the property, as you may know, is uh, zoned in two zones, uh, one that allows for commercial development and the other is, is ag. Uh, in keeping with what uh, 
we're currently doing at Farmstead and our, our approach to this project, all of the ag lands will remain in ag and will be actively farmed by us. Uh, which is substantially different than many of the proposals that came forward to the Planning Commission over prior years where there was an attempt, an, an attempt various proposals to uh, create a much larger commercial uh, property uh, development there that may have uh, resulted in requests for variances. So at the present time, we don't envision any requests for variances and uh, we uh, don't re envision any uh, requests for uh, height uh, variances or any others for that matter. In terms of timing, uh, a lot depends on how well uh, we and you and Noah and the city staff work together. Uh, we have uh, begun the process of getting some of the basic studies underway. We've reached agreement today with the city staff to move forward with our traffic study, which is the most significant uh, issue to be thoroughly explored for the project and we will be shortly again with the concurrence of staff uh, pursuing some of the other studies that we need to uh, complete. Um, <clears throat> we envision uh, submitting a uh, use permit application with the other components uh, sometime in the next uh, three to six weeks with the hope that uh, we would um, be successful in gaining approval of a use permit by September of this year. If we're successful with that, we envision a building permit being issued by March of 2017. We'd start construction in uh, April of 2017 and uh, be in operation sometime in 2018, perhaps uh, to celebrate the 4th of July. So, um, uh, I'm happy to answer any other questions or elaborate on the project. Perfect. Thank you very much. Are there any questions on the timeline of this project? On the timeline? Timeline, because that was really what the update was oh. about, was the timeline. No. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. Very much appreciated you coming in and giving us an update. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Before I continue, I did want to just let everyone in the audience know that um, item nine, the demolition permit and design review for 1695 Chardonnay Way has been continued. So if you are here for that item, you don't need to stay. Just sorry I didn't say that earlier this evening. Um, moving on to our consent items, there are three. One is the approval of the minutes from our April 19th meeting. The other is a sign and use permit for one Main Street, which is the Harvest Inn and Harvest Table. And then the third is a use permit amendment for 1350 Main Street. Would anyone on the commission like to pull any of these items? Um, I'd like to remove number six. Okay. Would anyone from the audience like to remove any of these items? All right. If we can move number six to the public hearing sections and have a motion on the minutes and item seven, the use permit for 1350 Main Street. I, w I move that we um, approve uh, items, uh, the approval of the minutes and item seven on the consent calendar. Number, is that the minutes? Or the yes, she said the minutes. I oh, said the minutes to start with. Yeah. Second. Roll call, please. And that was Commissioner Kissner and Commissioner Monette. Commissioner Kissner? Yes. Commissioner Monette? Yes. Commissioner Koberstein? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Chairperson Park? Yes. All right, moving on to item six, the sign permit use permit for one Main Street. May we have a staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Parker. Uh, this is a request by the Harvest Inn for a sign permit and use permit in order to place three new monument signs along the front of the Harvest Inn property at one Main Street in the service commercial district. The new signs would be located on hotel property either within the existing stone wall or directly adjacent to it. 15% uh, of lot depth must be the average front building setback along Main Street in the service commercial district, but in no case shall the setback be less than 35 feet, as the average lot depth is approximately 410 feet for the subject parcel. The average front setback must be approximately 60 feet. Therefore, the proposed monument signs require a use permit as they are not located 30 feet, uh, which is one half the distance the required front setback from the property line. 
Each of the vertical monument signs would be eight feet tall, eight inches thick, two feet wide, and double faced. They would both be constructed of aluminum skin over an aluminum angle frame with uh, painted lettering. The horizontal harvest table sign would be set behind an existing stone wall and would be approximately four and a half feet tall, uh, seven and a half feet wide, and uh, seven, yeah, and a half feet wide and seven feet thick. Uh, it's seven inches thick. This is the circular. Yep. Um, this sign would also be aluminum over aluminum with painted lettering. However, it would only be one sided. All three signs would be externally illuminated from on ground floor flood lighting uh, with cut off lens shielding to eliminate light overspill. Typically, monument sign on the corner lot, um, the horizontal harvest table sign would be required to be out of the visibility triangle. However, in this case, staff has no issues with the location of the sign because it is only four and a half feet tall and uh, is located behind existing trees and existing stone wall. The addition of the proposed signs will not create any new visibility issues and staff believes that required findings can be made and recommends approval of the project at this time. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Birch, are there any questions of staff? Are there any ex parte disclosures? No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like me, Mary? Except there's a, there's a, the same typo is on the first page of the recitals where it says it's six feet thick, if that's important. Yeah, it, yeah it's a typo. All right. Commissioner Goberstein? Yeah, um, I asked to remove this just because I wanna be sure that we all agree and understand what the use permit in this case has to entail. Um, and as I read the ordinance, um, we have something called identification signs, which I think has subsets to it. It has wall signs and it has monument signs. And as I read the regulations in the service commercial district, uh, each business can have uh, two signs and there's also a limit on square footage. And so I think in this case, um, we have to not only consider the setback um, issue, but I think we have to consider the number of signs and also the, the total square footage um, that we are granting when we uh, permit this. Um, I don't think it's a valid reading of the ordinance to say that an identification sign is only a sign that is affixed to a building, because if you do that, you get the absurd result that you could put as many monument signs as you wanted on a piece of property as long as they were not taller than eight feet. So I think the overall constraint in this um, district is two signs and then you get a certain amount of square footage depending whether you're on the primary frontage or the secondary. And in this case, we have both primary and secondary frontage. So as, as I see it, we may have one more sign that wouldn't be permitted because uh, you I'd, could have I'd, two on the, you could have two on the primary and one on the secondary, and I believe we may also have more square footage than is allowed. Although I don't know exactly how much because I don't know the square footage of the existing round monument sign. So I would just like to put that on the table. I think there's more that needs to go into the approval than the setback. I believe staff is conferring to address your oh, concerns. No, you guys can go ahead. I, I was just going to make a well, clarification. I have a question for you, Mary, just to, to understand your, I, I can't tell if you object to this project and this, this design. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I just want to better understand what your concern, because to me, this is a big property. Um, are you, so if I'm hearing you that you find that the ordinance is constrained, but you have an issue with, they have too, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. If they have too, you think they have too many signs given the ordinance, but are you applying that to the design of this particular project? No, I'm, I'm saying in general, I think we have to start from uh, thinking that we have to allow the signs to be closer to the road than is permitted, and that the proposal that is permitted is one more sign than would be allowed, and also exceeds the square footage. I'm not saying whether I think it's justified or not, but I think we need to incorporate that uh, into our consideration and, and voting. I think we've got somewhere over 100 square feet of total signage, and granted, we have a large piece of property, but I just wanna be sure we cover what I think, I feel, in my own view, the application requires. Yeah, I, I agree with what um, Commissioner Koberson has brought up in the sense, it was very confusing to me to read this, and, and there was some clarification, but uh, I think it I, th I think is definitely worth discussing because 
I think that we really should, um, you know, I, w I was thinking I was pledging to the flag that I pledge allegiance to the ordinance of the city of St. Helena, <laughs> kind of. I mean, that's what I'm, I really feel my, uh, that we're here for. And I just need, uh, I know the sign ordinance has gotten, uh, you know, is, is three and a half years ago, we asked to have it reviewed and renewed, and it, was in, it, wasn't, it wasn't really um, current and um, enforceable at that time, and it's, it's, it, it's gotten more out of sync. So I, I think it's important to get real clarification on all of this stuff and figure out what, what we can look at when we're trying to decide these things to get a, 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 a I want to get a sense of more stability and, and more clarity in what we can look at in this ordinance when we're trying to decide the sign issue because there are already other people on Main Street who are ha have I think we're getting a little bit off topic with that one Bobby but I would like to ask the fellow commissioners if we want to divide this up into the two topics one the setback and then two the square footage to to determine that because I think that that also gives staff a little bit of time to work the numbers with the square footage. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that, that under the ordinance, it, it refers to identification signs, and those specifically pertain to uh, primary and secondary frontage. And if you look at the definitions for primary and secondary frontage, uh, for instance, primary frontage means the side of a building facing a street, or in the case of a building having uh, more than one side facing the street, the side so designated by the property owner. So those are, sp those are specific to signs on buildings. They are not specific to monument signs, nor is the square footage. Right, but we have a definition in the ordinance of wall sign, which is the sign that's on the building. We have an identification sign definition, and we have a wall sign definition. So to me, a sign that goes on the building is a wall sign, an identification sign is a large set within which you might have monument signs, wall signs, you know, awning signs. That's that's just the way I read it, and I, I want to be sure we're adequately covering what the applicant is asking for. I, I think at the end of the day, the, these are discretionary approvals, and they they fall under the planning commission's um, discretion either way. So. Um, these these are here before you as a planning commission sign permit for you for you to decide whether they're compatible and appropriate for the for the locations. But yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's important to apply the location. I mean, I think that the size of the said location, the size of the location. What I mean, this is Main Street. I think there's a safety issue here. The, I think having the sign helps traffic. I mean, people trying to figure out where they pull in to Harveston is a challenge, and I think having lit signs that will give them an opportunity to prepare to stop, prepare to turn. There, there's there's bigger issues, I think, than micro. I, I feel that we can sometimes get bogged down in the ordinance, and that's what our job is, is to apply intelligence to the ordinance. I mean, I, I respect the, the detail, but there are, I, I believe. Yeah, I'm not against these signs at all. Um, no. I just didn't know whether to think of them. I mean, I still don't know whether to think of them I mean, the categories that um, Commissioner Coverstein talked about, I'm not sure whether to think of this monument sign as an identification sign or not. That's all. It's just, uh, you know, it's it, to get more clarity would be. Um, I, I think the issue is just the ordinance is poorly written and, and yes. it contradicts itself, frankly, in, in different yes. areas. So while there are sign definitions that staff looked at, um, there's also frontage definitions which are built into the sign language and it, and it contradicts itself because mm -hmm. the frontage definition said it's only building and not site frontage and so that added the complication. But I think zooming back out to the 10,000 foot level, are the signs appropriate for the site? Um, are there additional findings right. that are necessary to address? Right, that's what I'm getting at. Exactly. So we would be happy to incorporate whatever findings the Planning Commission thinks is appropriate in order to support the action or deny it depending on the decision. Um, and staff does recognize some of the challenges with the ordinance uh, on the list to do is a comprehensive zoning code update, which we are eager to tackle as soon as the general plan uh, update process is completed. I agree with uh, Commissioner Fogerstein. Microphone. Um, Grace, microphone. I, I, I think that there's just too much square footage on, uh, on those signs. Uh, I guess because of what else I see coming um, down Highway 29, I think we're starting to get an over uh, abundance of signs, and 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 I don't know if we want that kind of thing as the entryway to to um, the city. Uh, so I would like to see these uh, either either one of the signs gone or the other ones reduced in in square footage. You want to talk about setback first? Or? Um, I <laughs> that's what we were. <laughs> Well, we're, we're do on the square footage right now, so let's okay. why don't we stay on square footage and then we'll switch over to setbacks. Okay. 
um, at, on the square footage, I think there are, are some unique things about this property. First, it is quite large. Second, you don't even see the buildings from the street. Uh, if you put a wall sign on there, nobody would see it. So their only means of identification is monument signs. Um, I do think that there is a need for some identification at what I would call the secondary driveway, uh, because right now you can come to the Harvest Inn from the south and you might you, you wouldn't right. even know that it's there or what it is. Um, if anything troubles me about this, it's it's the the number of four and um, what I wish we might have been presented with was a, a single large monument sign at the main entry that incorporated both the restaurant and you know the hotel property so that we didn't have this proliferation of signs marching down um, 29. I, I recognize when you come from the north, you really can't read that big sign that's out there. You, you see it from the south. You, you need something that people see and, um, you know. Well, I would argue that this goes to, I mean, it, it, this seems, it, and again, in, in all due respect, that seems to contradict what we often hear that people don't like massing. I mean, I think they've tastefully planted small signs that are visible um, from the approach, depending which way you're, you're, you're approaching the location, and we don't see a big billboard. If we threw all of that into one big sign, I think it would, it would to Grace's point, feel like a, a big, advertising billboard. I think these are tastefully done. I think they fit into the property and they're going to be, you're only, wherever you are, you're only going to see one small sign. You're not going to be seen, you're not going to be hit with a big visual wall. I think that these are each, they, at least from the drawings I see here and from looking at these signs, you're going, they're just very discreetly layered into their location on the property and you're not going to get overwhelmed. The other thing to, to take into consideration is the mature landscaping that does right. border. It does, I mean, these are they're not standing no. sparse, just all on their I own. I mean, we all know the property. Look at the size relative to the round existing sign. These are all, you know, eight foot by whatever the inches was is not large relative. So I, I think they are tasteful. I think they are inserted quietly. And I, I, my opinion on this would be to put them all together in one large sign would be counterintuitive yeah. to our idea to having things disappear into <coughs> the landscape. I'm, I'm not saying one sign for the whole property. I, in, in to me, the best of all worlds would be if they had the opportunity to do one monument sign at the main entrance instead of two. One on each side seems a little overkill. So your biggest issue is this is the other um, sign that's right on there. the entryway right. across from the round. Right. Is you know, like right now, what you see is you see the temporary harvest table sign, and mm -hmm. just to me, it looks like a little bit of visual clutter out there and you're talking about the south entryway to uh, town. Um, and the staff report m mentioned that there were modifications proposed to that big sign. It, it may not be possible, but it, um, I think if we are to approve this, we need to approve additional square footage and additional number of signs, in my opinion. I guess the issue really is with here is that there's two signs for Harvest Inn and there's two signs for Harvest Table. Mm -hmm. And because there's a lot going on on this property, that's why they have two each. Um, right. Mm -hmm. But I, I am hearing that we all like the idea of approving the signs, it's just how many, and if possible, do we have a compromise of maybe removing that fourth sign to kind of get this all going? Because it doesn't sound like we're in a complete consensus on the number. I'm, I agree with uh, Commissioner Sweeney on, on, the, on how it's designed and the number. I mean, I'm okay with that. I, I, was, I just didn't know how to, um, you know, I know on the other side, all due respect to Mr. Hall, that the, the um, farmstead is, I mean, is kind of like Burma Shave. I don't know if you guys <laughs> remember Burma Shave signs, but um, I think that's what we're trying to avoid, um, especially when there's not a joke at the end, um, which made it more palatable. But um, if, uh, from the design that they have, it doesn't look, it doesn't look the same way. And so I'm okay with the, I would be okay either way. I would be okay with uh, if, if the rest of the commission wanted to um, reduce a size or get rid of one of the sizes. Okay, so you're willing to, if we have to compromise, we can, yes. I'd just like to remind the chair, since it was pulled, it'd be appropriate to have a public hearing. I know, I was like, I'm like, I don't think I have pulled a, so yeah, so. And then the applicant is here if there's any questions. Oh, perfect, all right, I will open up the public hearing and invite the applicant forward. And I apologize, it just was so exciting, just want to talk about signs. And I apologize, my voice, um, have some dental work done, so my, I sound silly, I'm sorry. 
Um, <coughs> my name is Rick Kaufman, one of the owners of Harvest Inn. Thank you very much for considering our sign request. Um, at the risk of shooting myself in the foot, I think you're all right to feel the way you feel. I will acknowledge that we, we've looked at this 50 different ways. We're, we've now had Harvest Table open for, for 350 days without a real sign. And what you have is what we tried to design to meet what we thought was the intent of the code. I agree that the code has some contradictions and it was my assumption as a real estate guy, frankly, that it's written in a way that ultimately is designed to give you all the final say, no matter what the code says, which is the way a lot of commissions like to have it. Uh, it doesn't make it a clear playing field for all the applicants, but sometimes that's why we have elected officials to make decisions. So I, I get the conflict. I would say it is a large property. We've tried to scale these signs down. They're not much bigger than, than the front of each of these desks that you're each sitting at. Uh, they're a little shorter and a little longer, but the two by eight foot is what we thought was the small end of what was allowed. And because we have both the restaurant and the hotel operation, and we have both the north and south bound, that is how we ended up with the number that we, we got. And I appreciate your consideration and whatever you approve, I hope you approve something today. I deeply appreciate it. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them, but I don't know I how some, helpful yeah, it would be. Go ahead. I have some questions. Um, <coughs> one thing that strikes me about these is that um, the, the character of what you're now proposing seems quite different to me from the big sign that's out there. Could you talk a little bit about how you ended up with this particular? Sure. Um, the character of the property was very different uh, two and a half years ago before we bought it. And part of our business plan was to elevate the character of the property. It was essentially a large bed and breakfast that, that as I said, was coasting. And part of our uh, investment has been to elevate St. Helena and Harvest Inn to uh, a little higher level. Um, my partners and I often joke about brick, that if we don't like brick, we bought the wrong hotel. And one of us likes brick more than the other. Um, but the monument is there. We did evaluate removing it. Um, but it, it speaks to the dialect of the very whimsical chimneys. Uh, but I think our customer and the people that we want to attract to town are not just the people like my family who moved here from a square state in Kansas and Missouri, but from a more urban environment who want less doilies and and brick and more clean, timeless look. And so what we've tried to do is balance and honor clean and simple and not overcomplicate it. I will say the, des the signs were designed to be somewhat simplistic and not very confusing. Uh, and when we looked at all the signs f between here and there, most of them are very complicated. And then just beyond, there's some huge signs, which as an owner, I'd love, but as your neighbor, I'd be embarrassed to, to do. So uh, to us, the, the, the iconography and the, the visual effect of them is to be, to let people know you're here. I mean, I can't tell you how hard it is to walk into any other business in town. No one knows we're there. And we just need people to know we're there. So is it fair to say this design is consistent with sort of your shift in branding Vision. or? Something. I think that's uh, yes, while respecting how we understand the code. And did you give any consideration to making the sign on the southern frontage <coughs> smaller, like you did the harvest table sign that's up at the corner? Uh, did we? No. Yeah, I thought we wanted them to be consistent. The smaller one that's smaller, frankly, was because of the Wall? triangle issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's only as tall as it is because of the stone wall that's already there. Um, and the idea was that they be matching. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you look at the signs that are immediately south, you have Sutter Home and the Bunny. <laughs> so we're just trying to do. And Prager Port. And Prager. <laughs> um, so 
it wasn't thought of to be smaller, but I will say a lot of people miss it and then make a, a bad U-turn um, or just don't know it's there to miss. Um, we did reskin the existing uh, brick circle with our new logo um, and we reduced the amount. It used to, ha it used to be double-sided with two sets of letters and we did change that and just went with one. Um, I don't know if that helps the square footage discussion, but we did try to make it cleaner. I think that's the word I'd use. We're try these signs are meant to be clean and simple, not complicated. Um, yeah. Any other questions or? Are there any questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and continue commission discussion. Um, I'm just going to kind of tee off and say that uh, sitting here and listening to the applicant and listening to everyone, I, I think that I'm actually quite comfortable with the four signs and just to make sure in the findings that we write them very distinctly. Um, given that there are two businesses really on this property, there's a hotel and there's a restaurant and they're really trying to get the restaurant to have the visibility that is hard on on the entryway to St. Helena. It's right there at, at our city, city line. So that is where I am leaning, but. Mm -hmm. And I'm very comfortable with the proposal as is. I think they placed the signs and they were very consistent with the brand. And I think given the size of the property and given um, the difficulty it is to see the entrances going either direction, I think they'll be helpful to a traffic flow. I can go along with that unless it's some strong, strong um, resistance. Um, but and, and I and I do think I do think it's our discretion to to do these things. But I do think it's nice to have something to base something objective to base our discretion on. And it's, it's I think it's important to look at stuff. Um, I agree. Yeah. Commissioner Kistner. I can go along with this. I I think the discussion was um, very necessary, and I think. It I think the subject needs to be looked into more depth, but I can't approve this project as it is. Yeah, I agree. I think um, the property certainly warrants more than one sign. Um, I find it somewhat not a cohesive package because of the existing round sign and the design of it, but I understand now you know, why, why we end up with these sleek signs and, and then what I would call the more old fashioned, for lack of a better word. Um, sign. Uh, my only wish is that the one at the southern driveway was a little smaller. I think um, it, it's almost a secondary entrance, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I, I can support it as it is. But I do think we need to, in our approval, also allow more signs than would be permitted and more square footage in addition to the setback. Do we have a motion? You mean to state that? Is that what you meant, Mary? Yeah, I, I think yeah. I think that makes sense. You just want to make a conscious step. Statement yes, that we that we knowingly that makes ex sense. expanded the square footage and the setbacks, yeah. given the property. Um, so elements. I move that we determine that the project is exempt from the requirements of CEQA pursuant to Section one five three one one, Class eleven A, of the CEQA guidelines, which exempts on premise business signs. Approve the request for a use permit and sign permit to place three new monument signs on the property located at one Main Street with the um, additional language that we just discussed. Second. Second. Commissioner Monet? Yes. Vice Chair Kistner? Yes. Commissioner Koberstein? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Vice Chair Park, I mean, excuse me, Chairperson Parker? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Moving on to our next item, this is a design review for 1810 Main Street. May we have a staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Parker. The applicant is seeking design review approval to convert approximately 400 square feet of existing covered patio deck into conditioned living space and to construct a new 1,028 square foot two-story garage and second unit toward the rear of the property at 1810 Main Street. The proposed project site currently consists of two parcels, one of which is landlocked. As part of the process, the planning director has conditionally approved a lot merger of the two parcels in order to accommodate the project and create a more functional and proper parcel. 
When combined, the two parcels are approximately 12,300 square feet. The project site slopes downward from street level along Main Street toward the rear of the property. Thus, a lower level of the home is created as you move back toward the property. The existing home consists of 1,225 square feet on the main floor with a 600 square foot covered patio deck to the rear and a 1,170 square foot lower level, which is 2,395 square feet of conditioned living space. As proposed, the main floor would become 1,623 square feet with a 202 square foot deck and the lower level would remain the same square footage um, for 2,793 square feet of conditioned living space. It should be noted that no work is being proposed on the lower level except for structural reinforcement for the main floor expansion. At street level, the home is approximately 14 feet 10 inches, which will remain unchanged. The new second unit and one car garage would stand at approximately 19 feet 1 inch, um, be located over 90 feet from the rear property line, and would be finished with materials that match the existing home. The existing home is legal non-conforming as the side yard setback on the south side of the home is only five feet from the property line. Municipal code section 17140030C states that a non-conforming building structure or physical feature may be remodeled, rehabilitated, or structurally altered if the new work does not increase a degree in non-conformity. As a project consists of enclosing uh, 400 square feet of existing covered patio and deck space toward the rear of the main level, the home's footprint is not changing and no new structures are being proposed within the setback. The proposed project would result in a floor area ratio that is 321 square feet less than the maximum permitted on the parcel. The closest sewer, uh, <coughs> city sewer line to the site is located approximately a quarter mile away on Fulton Lane near the existing railroad crossing. As a result, the project will be required to re rely on septic systems both in the short and long term. The applicant will be required to upgrade the existing septic system in order to be more efficient and to accommodate the project as proposed. This will have to be approved by Napa County before any building permits are issued, and that is included as condition 21 and 22 in the conditions of approval. As merged, the subject parcel uh, is long and with unique topography that slopes downward toward the rear of the property. Although the proposed second unit and garage would be two stories in height, it's modest in size and would not have the same visual effect of a two-story structure on a level parcel. Staff feels the proposed project meets all required development standards is, and is compatible with the site. For these reasons, staff believes the project uh, is consistent with the design review criteria and rec recommends approval of the project. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Are there any questions of staff? Um, you. Uh, it says on um, condition 21 that the existing septic system shall be demolished. Is that what you were referring to? That, that's sense? correct. I, um, uh, there's an existing septic system that I don't believe will accommodate the, the second unit. Um, so they're going to have to upgrade it uh, to meet. So they have to current. get a new one. They're going to have to get a new one. And that was my question. So th there was one uh, citizen concerned around the whole issue of leach field and septic yeah. tanks. So is that been adequately resolved and addressed? Yeah, but through the conditions. Nap Napa County has to uh, provide them a permit for the upgraded septic system. They will not get a building permit uh, without that approval from Napa County. All right. Any other questions? All right. I'd like to open up the public hearing and invite the applicant to come forward. Are they correct? Hi, I'm Doug Friday. While I am a general contractor, I was brought into this merely to facilitate all the paperwork and help with all of that and communication. So that is my role. This is David McClellan. He is the builder of record. He will be the one doing the project. And this is Kathleen Silver. She is the owner of the project. Perfect. Are there any questions for the applicant? All right. Thank you very much. I guess that's, thank you for introducing yourself, unless you have something you'd like to present. I'm right. sounding really good right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're very authoritative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak on this agenda item? Hello, David Katz, Mimi Katz, 1771 Park Street. We're the neighbors uh, just over the fence from you. Nice to meet you for the first time. Um, we have some concerns and staff has helped us to address some of those concerns, but not all of them. Uh, first of all, we didn't receive this notice until Wednesday of last week, which we don't believe is proper notice. I did speak to Gary Medigan, who is the 
owner to the direct north property of us, he said he also did not, nor did his renters receive any proper notice. So we are concerned. Um, what concerns us in some part is that no part of this notice included anything about joining two parcels. So this entire project seems to be predicated on the stamp of approval to combine these two parcels. As it is, we understand that the parcel that is directly behind our fence is not buildable because there is no reasonable expectation that you could create a decent leach bit for it as a separate property. So by combining them, you are in essence allowing this owner to do something that they could not have done before. We're not telling you whether you should or you shouldn't, but I do think that it bears some consideration for longtime residents who had an understanding that that lot, as it stood, was not buildable. So now it's being built on. Um, also, the plans call for an art studio. That's what it's called in the plans, but we see the word second unit used in this flyer that was received a week ago. A second unit is not an art studio. A second unit is a second unit. So we need some clarification on, is this rentable? Under what circumstances? We just need more questions answered. Um, and it seems to us that those questions have neither been answered nor has the owner of the property uh, approached us in any way, shape, or form. The only introduction we had to this owner was an eight-foot fence being erected with absolutely zero yeah. notice. In front of our own other fence. In, in front of a six-foot standing fence. And my understanding is that eight-foot fence is not to code. So we came home one day and saw an eight-foot eight foot fence standing. Um, we are to the, you know, to put it in the best possible terms, upset. Um, we are also very concerned about the manner in which this entire process has taken part. Um, we also want to understand very clearly whether joining these two parcels is part of what you're here to decide tonight because it was not part of this announcement. Okay, perfect, thank you very much. I'd be happy to respond to some of the questions. I see you very excited to answer those for us before we move on in our public hearing. <laughs> um, thank you. So uh, with regards to noticing, um, staff has confirmed that the notices were sent out in compliance with the regulations. We've seen the, um, the postage stamp on the envelopes, so we don't know uh, what issues were uh, occurred with the, when the applicant got the mail. However, we know that the noticing was, was uh, sent with adequate timing. What's the timing? Is ten it day notice. Ten days. Which is what the code dictates. Okay. Um, so it was yeah. ten days from the postmark. So it was only eight, nine days or eight days? The postmark, postmark. date qualified for okay. ten days. Okay. Uh, with regards to the eight foot fence, the applicant, or I'm sorry, the neighbor did uh, send an email to me um, after I met with him and, and spoke about his concerns and staff has uh, provided him with a code enforcement um, form. Uh, eight foot fence is n um, eight foot fence is not a permitted use, so you do not have the right to construct an eight foot fence. However, staff hasn't been on site to take any measurements or confirm any of the information that's been provided. Uh, however, we will send a letter to the owner, go out, investigate, initiate code enforcement if necessary, and ensure that it's uh, addressed adequately. So whether it's bringing the fence down to six feet, whether it's them filing a use permit to um, propose a higher f a higher fence, some combination of such. Um, but again, staff has not been on site. Uh, the, I think the email came in yesterday or the day before, and then we asked them to fill out a code enforcement form. Um, we did speak with the applicant, I believe, on Monday on the phone. Um, and you could correct me, uh, maybe it was last week on the phone. And then, um, I'm sorry, we spent early last week, and then uh, you came in either Thursday or Friday. No, not, not you, I'm, I'm looking to... Mr. Katz, Wednesday. 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 Yeah, that's what I thought. So we've spoken um, with Mr. Katz on the phone, explained kind of the process. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, if the fence was built over eight feet, um, that is a violation. There were no building permits or planning approvals uh, in order to allow that. So that'll be addressed. Uh, with regards to joining of the parcels. So the joining of the parcels is before the planning commission tonight. Um, the code language is, is rather awkward in that <coughs> a lot merger is, uh, is approved at the planning director level, according to the code. Then the planning director is required at the next meeting to present a report of that merger to the commission to allow the commission to um, 
weigh in on the adequacy or the, the you know the appropriateness of that approval. Rather than do that, staff said, let's put the lot merger before the commission in conjunction with the design review, essentially to um, eliminate that what if step um, and also just the rather awkwardness of it. I mean, there's, there's almost no discretion given to the director and in this case, it just seems like an, an awkward methodology to um, approve a, an element of a project, especially when there are, are other discretionary elements coming before the commission. So staff chose to elevate that to the commission's level. It's my understanding that the notice did not identify that the lots were to be merged um, as a part of this decision. Clarify. So is that um, required uh, to notify the neighbors of everything that's going to be happening? Um, and that would that be a reason to continue this so that the neighbors could have time to um, you know, to think about it and decide what they wanted to do. So the if the if the planning director makes a decision, uh, it's not required to be noticed and it's not required to be a public hearing. Uh, however, if the um, if the planning commission chooses to uh, review the lot line adjustment, that should be done at a public hearing, which this is a public hearing, but it was not noticed appropriately to identify that the merger was on it. So I'm wondering if we can hear it tonight without proper noticing. The commission could review the design. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, voice them to the applicant and then we can re-notice the item with the lot merger and design review to come back before the commission um, at a date certain. But we would still do the notification because the lot merger was never included. Okay. So it sounds like we, we have to continue this most likely just because of the lot merger situation it's just to make sure it's duly noticed it okay. would be most appropriate i mean technically the commission could act on the design review but it gets back to the other issue of why separate out two processes when they're both necessary i understand i understand your train of thought and i just i just had one uh i, I believe it would be a question of clar clarification so the project we're, we're talking about two separate lots that you're that we're proposing uh joining uh, were and this may or may not be an appropriate question, but I think it to me it's it's interesting. Were these separately acquired? And I again, from the the neighbor's perspective, that they were living under the belief that you could never develop this lot. I, I just want clarification that you we can't protect someone's thought around that this lot's never going to get acquired. I mean, I was, was having the same thought of of, of who represented that this was not a buildable lot. Yeah, so because so easements can be granted. Yeah. That's exactly I mean, right. Any so of those neighbors could have purchased this lot. That's correct. It is a legally created parcel that is designated for development. Right. The the applicant indicated, or I'm sorry, the neighbor indicated that when he spoke with city staff, they said the site was never big enough to accommodate the septic, and because there's no sewer in Main Street, that was the limitation on development. But that was only if it was a standalone lot. The ability to purchase by any of the contiguous neighbors and have it conjoined with their lot was always on the table. That's exactly right. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about the septic field? Um, <coughs> given the lot that's just on Main Street, uh, is it sufficient to support uh, a septic field that serves the house that's there? Um, I would defer to, to right. Public Works Director Steve Palmer. However, it, it appears that a significant amount of analysis has gone into the, the proposal and the applicants may be able to provide some additional information as well. So is the question whether the existing system adequately serves the existing home? I mean, I, I think that's a question to be answered by the applicant or environmental health of the county. The city doesn't regulate the septic tanks or evaluate them as septic systems at all. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is does the consolidation of the two lots make it possible to put a septic field there that more adequately serves the, the existing house um, along with the additional proposed um, studio. I, I mean, maybe we could hear from. I yeah. would defer to the applicant. Just we have no expertise on that. Right. Field. All right. Would you like me to reopen the public hearing to oh. have an answer? Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Um, what is the um, what is it? A second unit or a studio? And what are or should we talk about that later? I don't know if this is. I d I don't. It's a, it's I'd a, like a clarification. It's a second unit. There's there's okay. cooking facilities and a bathroom. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Yeah. Which means it could be rented. Yes. All right. Would you like me to invite the applicant back up to answer your question on the septic? 
Um, you've ever seen? Yeah, I, okay. I think if, if the gentleman who are here or the applicant, and I also would be curious to know if this was marketed as two parcels um, purchased together or um, if it was done separately. Okay, I will open up the public hearing on those two specific items. So if you, yes, yes. Um, when Kathleen bought this property, it was sold to her as one piece of property. It was a total surprise that there were two units that she found out there were two separate pieces of property there. I don't know how that happened, but uh, that was in fact the case. So this is all a surprise and all the expense of doing the merger, et cetera, was, was an unknown when she bought the property. So there are two APN numbers, but in the sale, it just kind of Some, magically somebody appeared? Somebody missed it somewhere. It did not you know, come in all the paperwork. <laughs> Dave McClellan. Uh, it was discovered through escrow through the closing process that there was a lot that had not been merged to this lot that was landlocked that was not done by the previous owner that we learned through escrow. Uh, my client uh, went through the process to go ahead and purchase both properties with two APNs and with the intent to um, build and remodel this home moving from Arizona and wanting to relocate here to the wine country. So the thinking always was that, that what was she was lot. buying was the, the size of the two lots together. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as far as the septic, um, it is going to go at the very back of the property. Um, it is replacing entirely the existing septic. It is thought that a larger unit is necessary, not only to help the front building, the existing building, but to help with the new one. So that's the plan. It is uh, Bear Flag Engineering is handling all the engineering. They've been in contact regularly with um, uh, Napa County. Um, they've had one exchange of information and now it's been submitted for permitting. So, uh, and part of that permit is to remove the old one. It's and where is the old one located? It exists right now, right down through the center of the property encompassing on both lots existing now. We've gone through great extensive engineering testing and test pits involving Napa County uh, to get the perk rate and the flow rate for the design system to add the bathroom and the unit. Um, a great deal of work and, and preparation has gone into this. Do you um, mind actually maybe f pointing out like where it is on the two parcels, where the septic system is currently? It, well, you see the dotted line which shows you your two properties. Mm -hmm. And the septic runs from the speckled area out past into the second piece of property. All right, I see septic line to Leachfield. Is that where it's located? To okay. The right. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, perfect. Thank you very much. For the record, mm -hmm. um, the, there's no structure being built on that second lot, which was pointed out. And uh, that's all I like to say right now. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm corrected. Yes, about six feet of it where the, the hash line is. Yes. Thank you. And then the proposed septic tank I see is just down there below next to it. Okay, perfect. I can't see it, but I think yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, um, any I other questions? It, it's one lot, so this, would mar this was clearly marketed as one lot. I'm sorry? It was marketed as one lot. I can actually answer yes, it was. In the beginning, it was through the title process during the purchase, it was discovered it was two APNs. And then through the research and talking with the Planning Commission and the Napa County for what Mrs. Silver's plans were, it was determined that it would be okay and that we'd have to put it up in front to verify it, but to move forward, uh, we were aware of it. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, I have another question. For, was, oh. was, did, was not for you, uh, was for the... All right, with, and with that, with one moment, I'm going to close the public hearing and go ahead. Thank you. Um, was, did the notification say, is that where it said uh, studio as opposed to second unit? Don't recall. I believe, I believe it said second unit on the notice, but I... Oh, he's got it. Doug? It says second unit. Says okay, second unit. thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. So just to okay. respond, it yeah. w staff tries to identify what the code section defines it as, and applicants, that she may intend to use it as an art studio, so that, that's her intention, but we just use the technical definition for the code. All right. Commission discussion? 
I don't really have any issues with this. I, I'd say for the record, I'm happy to see three covered parking spaces, <laughs> along with a, a swimming pool and second unit. Mm -hmm. um, I think the property has uh, effectively been treated as one lot. If the old septic field was already onto that lot, I don't think that um, the consolidation or combination of the two of them here does much more than uh, perhaps allow a little more structure, but also allow a much improved um, septic field. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I consider to be a modest expansion of this house, um, unlike some other cases, and uh, I, I really don't have any issues with it. I can sympathize with the neighbor about the fence, and I think that should be investigated, but otherwise I can support it. And, and I agree with all of those points. I think that it's, it's well designed for the space. I think it makes good use and it fixes really some errors that have existed along the way. I uh, too sympathize with the neighbors on the fence and I, I do believe that I think as a commission we've encouraged applicants to reach out on their own. So this isn't the first time we're meeting. So I you know, would encourage that, that communication. But that notwithstanding, I think the project that has developed is within keeping of the things we're trying to do here. So I, I support it. Uh, I like the project. I think it's very well designed. Uh, I certainly like the design on that second unit. I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, really nice. And I like, as uh, my fellow commissioner over here liked, uh, I like the fact that we've got some covered parking and the required parking on the uh, off the street, particularly there In the now. Rear with the, of the law. Particularly there now with the problems they're having on that street with parking. Well, I don't disagree with anything I've heard. However, I don't feel I have enough information because I don't feel the notice was, <coughs> you know, was given completely, and that the na neighbors, um, not just these neighbors, but other neighbors with a completed notice, might have more to say. So I, I uh, so I guess we're um, continuing the part on the lot merger, are we? Because it wasn't noticed. No, properly. we're not at this point. I don't believe. Well, I. I we, we're going to have think a motion. We should. I, I think we should because I think it's always really important to to give neighbors more than enough time, um, if they especially if they feel they didn't get enough time to um, to have a say. So uh, I d so because of that, I don't think I have enough information to be able to vote on this. Um, I definitely can sympathize with the neighbor with the fence and that. Th the feeling that this might have not been noticed properly, but given the fact that this property was on Zillow and in the real estate world as a single parcel, and then just, it's not as if she went in there buying two parcels and planned, no, no, she found out during escrow. That's after she put the offer in on the house. It was, that's true, but you might lose your deposit, which is gonna be thousands of dollars. So I can sympathize with, you know, you find bumps along the road and you she did the proper course and went and talked to state, city staff to see what the proper course of action would be. And I think that that's to be commended. I do, I, I um, um, echo Commissioner Sweeney, you know, co neighbor communication is always key, but I think that this project as is, 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 is good to go if we could have a motion. I move that we find the project to be exempt from sorry, requirements of CEQA pursuant to section 15301, which exempts the minor alteration of existing private structures, section 15303, which exempts the construction or conversion of small structures, including single family residences, garages, pools, etc., and section 15305C, which exempts minor land alterations, including revision to acreage, and we accept the required findings and approve the revised tentative parcel map and design review for the proposed lot merger and new construction at 1810 Main Street. Uh, I'd like to add uh, that we uh, have the fence put into compliance. Yes, so um, as Commissioner uh, Kistner. Kistner added that the, the structure of the fence be brought into compliance and uh, is a con I That's guess is a continuum. Yeah. Okay. Can we make that a condition? You're free to make that yes, a condition. Yes, we can, we can make it. We both continue it. Continue it. I think that's a, yeah. that's well, a good idea. Uh, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase.
rephrase it. Very yeah, let me rephrase it. Uh, excuse me, sir, let Commissioner Sweeney. I'm going to rephrase that, that okay. if the defense is determined to be in violation of existing code and exceeds the six-foot limitation for that um, zone, that, that it will be brought into compliance as a condition of approval. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Roll call, please. That was Commissioner Sweeney and Com Commissioner Kissner. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Vice Chair Kissner? Yes. Commissioner Koberstein? Yes. Commissioner Monette? No. Chairperson Parker? Yes. Thank you very much. M moving on to our next item, it's department reports for staff to report and give the commissioner up commission updates on relevant matters. Thank you for our tentative planning commission agenda. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Chair. So uh, as um, we have discussed previously regarding administrative determination, staff has made an administrative determination uh, since our previous meeting. And this is regarding the Overland Sheepskin, Sheepskin Company uh, being able to move into the uh, Goodman's, uh, former Goodman's uh, existing tenant space. Goodman's was a clothing retailer operating as an existing nonconforming business. Um, staff has reviewed Overland Sheepskin Company's business practices, uh, confirmed that they do not meet the definition for a formula business per the zoning code, uh, and as such has made an administrative determination that they may move in to occupy the Goodman site. Um, so just in keeping with our previous discussions regarding notification to the commission when staff makes such a determination, that's the intent for that. Um, I would like to uh, remind the commission and the public, uh, the city's budget workshop with the city council is occurring tomorrow at the fire station all day, nine to five. Um, it's open to the public and individual city departments will be presenting to the city council their budget requests and kind of summarizing some of the, what each department does. Um, I also would like to inform the commission that the next uh, commission meeting on the 17th of May will be a uh, general plan study session. Uh, we had one at the last meeting and we will be uh, having another at the next meeting and it will be, uh, I believe, the only item on the agenda. So the intent is to be able to get through a, a, a larger chunk than last That's time. That's exactly right. Uh, and then I would like to um, turn it over to Public Works Director S uh, Steve Palmer to announce Public Works Week. That's right. Uh, thank you, Director Housh. Um, next, let's see, May 15th to 20th is National Public Works Week. Um, so during that time, it's an opportunity for us to recognize public works staff that keep our streets clean and keep, have, uh, keep the sewers flowing, keep the water in our pipes clean. So we're doing some um, fun things this time. We're doing some tours of public works facilities that people are interested in coming out. City Hall is not that exciting to me, but you can come <laughs> visit the wastewater plant. You can visit the water treatment plant. You can come see the corp yard. Um, if flyers haven't gone out already, there are some. I know we have a few here. And that's the week of May. It's May 15th to 20th. Okay. And that's there are specific a, that's days. That's Sunday, correct? 15th to 20th. 15th to 20th 15th, oh, it starts on the 20th, on Sunday. Okay. Isn't that that's Sunday, right? Yeah. Yes. So 16th to 20th, I guess, effectively for business week, Monday. Um, and each day of the week, you know, tours will be offered at specific facilities each day of the week. So I can't remember which, but Monday is a certain facility or Tuesday. I think we start tours Tuesday um, with the, um, each day dif a different facility. So people interested, the flyers, they haven't gone out on the um, web page already. They will be shortly. Um, people are encouraged to residents sign up and come see what come learn, come see what public works is all about. Perfect. Can I ask a question about the uh, um, determination you made? Is that classified as a clothing store? That's correct. So it will come to us as a conditional permit? No, it's a continuing use of a of clothing store. Of the same store. clothing the same store. Gotcha. Yeah, so same use same type, use. continuing yeah. as a, yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. All right, um, agenda forecast. Is there anything that anyone would like to ask that we motion to be on the next agenda? Well, I, I would just add that the um, City Council will be uh, conducting their second reading of the short-term rental ordinance revisions at their next meeting on May 10th. Um, that presentation went very well. Uh, the Commission, or the, the Council, I believe, supported all the recommendations of the Commission, including um, s the 60-day requirement except for primary residences, so they did add that exemption, and that all new um, short-term rental applications will be coming before the Planning Commission for review and action. Uh, given that, they also struck out the um, 
context or the proximity requirements because they're saying if it's coming before the commission anyway then you, you're going to be looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis and they also directed staff to craft new um, findings which is supportive of of the commission so those will be um, in place in the second reading of the ordinance uh, in theory will be adopted at the next meeting and similarly the council was also supportive of the multifamily housing by right which was unanimously supported by the commission as well uh, and those will be at the same agenda as the second reading so just to keep you up to date on that and based on the discussion um, for tonight I have added signed standards and enforcement to the uh, list of, of desired topics of future agendas from the Commission perfect thank you is there anything anyone would like to suggest all right well with that thank you very much this meeting is adjourned <laughs>